Hello and welcome to the Pharmacy Informatics Professor 2020 with your host, Dr. Armin Simonian. Data analytics is one of the core topics within pharmacy informatics, and it's a huge topic. I'm going to try to condense it down to a pretty much 10 minute presentation today, just to give the basics of what we're talking about with data analytics and give a couple of real life examples so that it gives you a better understanding of what we're talking about. We're talking about analyzing data from our health records. Let's go ahead and get started with a short presentation that will help me in the discussion of this topic. And we'll go ahead and get started with our focus on data analytics. Going back to the definition of pharmacy informatics, we know that we're trying to use knowledge and information systems applying it to the medication use process. And our goals are to have safer and more effective medication use. And using data analytics, we can really move towards more effective medication use with our electronic health records and other technologies that are applied to the medication use process. When we talk about data analytics, you'll hear a lot of terms. You'll hear about big data because we are collecting an incredible amount of information on our patients um, and our prescriber habits and uh, outcomes for our patients. All of this is in our electronic health records. Some of the information is also in these technologies such as automated dispensing cabinets or smart infusion pumps that have their own databases and information on um, the medication use within those arenas. All of those can be combined together in what we call a data warehouse. We've talked about the data warehouse before. We can gather information from the EHR and other sources, even clinics and um, digital health or personal health information and bring that into a, a larger data warehouse where we can then analyze all of that data together. When we do data analytics, we can look back, we can look retrospectively and look at um, health uh, outcomes uh, for our patients and do research on that. We can also have uh, real-time information that's presented to us so that we can get a snapshot of what's going on with our patients in our hospitals or clinics at any given time. And then we can also do predictive analytics where we look ahead. We actually have the computer. Uh, we teach it through machine learning. And examples of this are what I talked about previously with the IBM Watson project and even uh, teaching computer how to play chess and Jeopardy and um, challenge the um, human thinking through machine uh, learning. Uh, we have self-learning machines and we have something called deep learning. So we can write rules. We can try to teach our machines what to look for and then have the machine go out and do that and learn along the way. Or we can just give all of the data to the machine, to the computer, and have the computer analyze it for uh, norms, looking for normal distributions, looking for outliers, things are that are beyond the uh, one or two or three standard deviations. And then uh, coming back with results and presenting that to the human to see if there's any interesting uh, uh, aspects of what was found uh, through the deep learning process. Practically speaking, when we do analytics as a pharmacy informaticist, um, a lot of times you're using a spreadsheet such as Excel and data is being downloaded either from your technologies or your electronic health records. And then that data, those data elements are, are analyzed and um, we can also do reporting, and commonly with our EHRs, we use something called SQL, SQL, or Structured Query Language, where we can write reports, download data, we can filter data, and then download it, and then analyze the data. And we can also create real-time dashboards on our systems, just like we have dashboards on our cars that tell us how fast we're going and how fast the engine is turning and other information about the status of our engine. 
Um, we can have dashboards in our EHR that give us real-time information on what's going on in our institution. And then we also have companies out there that have written analytic software and they can analyze data for us. And we also have uh, within our technology, such as I mentioned with automated dispensing cabinets or smart pumps, we can have embedded reports in the software for those systems. And those systems can do some preliminary analytics for us. In today's world, if we look at the pandemic uh, in our hospitals, an example of how we might do real-time data analytics is we could have a COVID-19 dashboard. And this might tell us how many uh, patients we have in our hospital right now at any given moment. An administrator can sit at their computer and look at the dashboard and see how many patients have been diagnosed with COVID-19 in the hospital can display a graph of the 14-day trend of cases of COVID-19. Using all this information that we've already gathered and then analyzing it and coming up with numbers, uh, percent of ICU beds currently occupied to see what the capacity might be to take more COVID-19 patients. And then those that are critically ill that are on ventilators, we can keep track of our machines and see how many ventilators are being used and what capacity we have in case we get more cases. And then the other thing that we can do is report up to the Centers for Disease Control and uh, that CDC reporting can include from every hospital the number of cases of COVID and then where we're reporting from and then some information about our patients, gender, age, and ethnicity. And these are the things that you might see that are coalesced, put together on a national level. You might see it on the national news where they report the number of cases that have been coming up, the trends, um, where the hot spots are in the country for cases. And these are all coming from individual hospitals and clinics reporting up through the local city and state governments all the way to the federal government. And then we can put these numbers together uh, to see what's happening in the United States who's being affected the most and uh, where the problem spots are. And then we can actually add this data to the worldwide data to see what's happening with the pandemic across the world. In an article that I wrote with uh, my colleague, Jason Lamb, we talked about a rules implementation process and gave an example within this article. And I wanna talk about this a little bit. You'll see a lot of words on the screen, but um, you can pause later and read through it. They're just excerpts from the article. And the reason I want to talk about this is it really incorporates concepts and principles that I've talked about since the start of this series. So it touches on electronic health records and CPOE, e-prescribing, uh, clinical decision support, and then of course data analytics. So we start with data analytics and what we did at our hospital system is we looked at adverse drug event documentation and quality measure compliance reports. And we found that there was an issue specifically with uh, beta blockers not being continued after surgery. Now, this is something that um, is a, was a core measure, and so uh, we wanted to try and increase the compliance of reordering beta blockers after surgery. And so we wrote a rule that looked at patients post-operative day uh, zero, one, or two, and then checked to see if they were on a beta blocker prior to surgery, and then if that was continued after surgery. We put that rule into place, and then seven months after we implemented the rule, we did a chart review. We went back and did some analytics. We looked at uh, patient charts. Uh, we figured out where the rule had fired, how many times it had fired. And of those uh, cases where the rule did fire, what was the response of the clinician? Did they go ahead and heed the rule, uh, heed the pop-up, and do something about ordering the beta blocker did they ignore the rule? Did they go after ignoring the rule, go back into the patient's chart and order the beta blocker? We analyzed all of that. 
And in the end, um, we found out that the rule was being effective and we decided to continue it to try to uh, keep it at 100% compliance. So this is just one example of uh, a data analytics scenario. And it's, as I said, related to rules implementation, clinical decision support. And one of the basic things that you might do as a pharmacy informaticist as you're um, implementing your systems and then trying to improve through clinical decision support, you also want to analyze the data to see if what you're doing is effective and is helping improve medication therapy. So I hope this gives you a good idea, at least of the basics of data analytics and some pointers and keywords that you might explore further to get into this topic. If this video was helpful for you, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll thank you for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, look after the health of others. I'll start working on more uh, episodes and hope to see you next time. Take care.